In honor of the spoopiest month of the year, I've collected all of my orange art supplies, and now I'm going to draw something using every single one of them. So I've got all of my orange art supplies on the left side of my desk, and as I use them, I will transfer them to the right side. So starting off, I'm going to be using this Vermilion Prismacolor Color Race Pencil. I actually googled it. Vermilion is technically a red color, but I don't have an orange Prismacolor Color Race Pencil. And vermilion is the orangest of the reds, so I'm gonna let this slide. <laughs> this is the only orange, air quotes, <laughs> art supply that I own that is erasable, so I'm going to get a lot of use out of this, sketching out the entire illustration and my idea onto paper before I start adding in those more permanent colors. Uh, my idea for this drawing was, well, I wanted to draw something, you know, Halloween themed, and I was using the color orange, and I had to think about what's Halloween that's orange but like I can't use the color black because I only have orange and most of my ideas like incorporated a lot more black tones and I don't have those art supplies <laughs> so I had to think of orange and the only thing that kept coming to mind was jack-o'-lanterns and I really wanted to draw a witch with maybe like an orange hat I thought would be cool and then I was like well witches have cauldrons but cauldrons are black what if the cauldron was a jack-o'-lantern hey <laughs> That, that, that's how my brain worked, at least. And then once the sketch was done, I moved on to one of my newest pieces in my art collection, which are my Copic markers. And this is the YR61 or Spring Orange. And this is actually the lightest orange color that I have. I swatched every single piece that I have, and uh, this was the lightest one. So I decided to start light and work my way to darker tones. Um, because hopefully, I mean, you can always sort of get darker for the most part, whereas you can't get lighter. So I was like trying to be, <laughs> I was trying to be um, stingy with my ink, I guess. <laughs> um, and it was during coloring her face that I decided I wanted it to be like bottom lit. So I wanted like the cauldron to sort of be glowing and sort of face to be lit from beneath. And I kind of messed up a bit with her eyelids because I didn't really know what I was doing at the time. But after that, I, I pretty much stuck to my light source. <laughs> Once I had decided on a light source, of course. Next, I used this Ohu dual tip brush pen. And I use this to darken the eyelids to try and give the illusion, you know, that the light's coming from beneath. So if your eyelids kind of protrude a bit from your face, they'd be darker on the top half and a little bit lighter on the, like below the eye. And then it'd be lighter again, right below the eyebrows. If you're kind of thinking of the head in like a 3D shape, like where the shadows would be. I've never done this sort of exaggerated lighting before, so this was definitely a very fun experiment. Then I used a good old Crayola colored pencil in the color yellow orange. I still own these for some reason. I just, I just can't seem to cut the cord and let them go. <laughs> then we have this Ohu art marker in the color 21 and I didn't really realize this because next to all my other markers it looks orange, but it's definitely the brownest of my orange art supplies. Um, and this marker ended up being a complete lifesaver because it is the darkest orange or brown, I guess, <laughs> that I own. And it was really helpful for creating like those differences in tones and contrast throughout the illustration. And you'll see me pick up this marker a lot going forward. Like <laughs> even after I use some more, like I'll keep going back to this to try and darken up areas. And yeah, this piece was definitely a work in progress as most mixed media art pieces are. And it's funny about doing these challenges is I do my art completely different than how I would usually like I have like a sort of like an outline that I always follow for my art like I sketch I erase the sketch a little bit I add line art and then I add color like no matter what medium that's usually what I do whereas when I do these challenges I do everything so out of order and I'm like randomly jumping to different parts of the illustration and tweaking different parts as I go. And it's just so different than what I'm used to. And it, it kind of like brings a sort of like experimentation into art that I really, really enjoy doing. And yeah, that's what you'll see me do a lot. So if any part looks really, really ugly right now, I'm gonna work on it. Just give me a second. I was gonna like reassure you and say it's all gonna turn out fine, but we'll see. <laughs> Then I went in with this Zig Writer by Kurataki, and this is actually dual tip. It's got one side is a 0.5 millimeter nib and the other nib is a 1.2 millimeter. And I basically just used the smaller side and used it to like create sort of a line art around the face and try to give some more definition to those facial features. And of course her wart. <laughs> What witch is complete without a wart? Then I switched to the larger nib and started coloring in the hair. And I wasn't 100% happy with this 
tone. So you'll see me play around with the hair color. Well, not the color, the tone <laughs> a lot throughout the rest of this process. Um, but I did go through and fill it all in with that color and then moved on to the next art supply, which is the Crayola Magic Marker in orange. I'm just hoarding Crayola products at this point because I, I don't use them for anything. <laughs> But I was actually pleasantly surprised with like the tone of this marker. I feel like it is just the brightest, funnest orange in my collection. And I use this to just sort of darken the tone of the hair behind her neck and try to give the illusion that that's like in the farther distance and like the other hair is more farther forward, that sort of thing. Then I used this Ohu art marker in the color 22 and I used it to outline the belt buckle and the rim of her hat. Then I used the Koinor Hardmuth Mondaluz watercolor pencil. I don't know how you say those things. Those are all words that are foreign to me. But this is one of several watercolor pencils that I'll be using today. I use this in several places like the hair and the cheeks and the nose to sort of add a little bit more color to the face and also on the belt at the top of her hat. And then I went with my uh, paintbrush with a little bit of water and smoothed out that color and you know, it actually became more vibrant when I added water to it. I like the color better now than when it was just pencil. So yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> then I used the Stedler Tri Plus Fine Liner and outlined all the bubbles and like the sort of the potion and tried to give that a little bit more definition before I went in with other colors. Then I used another Ohu art marker, this time in the color F04. And this is not just another Ohu marker. This is, I assume the F stands for fluorescent, but you know how like highlighters, when you use a highlighter, you like, highlight something you're like oh that is the most gorgeous vibrant color ever and then you come back like 10 minutes later and it just looks poopy i have not had that problem with this marker <laughs> i'm honestly kind of amazed i've never had a chance to use the fluorescent markers like in that come with the who pack so this was actually really exciting to like see how that would work and how you would incorporate that into a piece and so i used it to color sort of this like otherworldly color of potion so i feel like it suits the picture pretty well then since i was Coloring in the potion, I moved on to this Chocola Premium Wet Wipe Marker. <laughs> it's not meant for paper, but it's also the second most fluorescent color of orange that I own. So I used that and just added texture to the potion. This is another Ohu art marker, and this time in the color 23. And I used this to touch up the hair and sort of add outlines to the pumpkin cauldron. Looking back, I kind of wish I had added handles to the pumpkin cauldron, you know, well, the jack-o'-lantern cauldron, because I feel like that would have push to that idea a little further but hey <laughs> for next time to color in the pumpkin i used this copic sketch marker in the color yr15 and it's actually the color pumpkin yellow i didn't even realize this till just now okay <laughs> i used it to color in the pumpkin so i didn't really realize how great copic markers are until i'm using them alongside all of my other like cheaper art supplies um yeah just the quality and the way it feels as i brush it on the paper like there's just there's just a little extra something there a little extra quality i don't know just the workmanship or something i don't know if <laughs> i just really enjoyed using this marker and coloring in that pumpkin so i guess i'm just saying that i'm not regretting paying as much as i did for these so <laughs> that's a good feeling. <laughs> Better than the alternative, that's for sure. Also, I just wanted to say really quickly, I'm very happy with the way the, the part of her hat turned out without any outlines. Like I just colored it in with like a flat color of Copic and it makes me want to really experiment with my style and try and color something like without line art and see what I could do using Copic markers. So yeah, let me know if you think I should try that. I'm, I'm kind of excited to try it. I really like the way that looks. Anyway. Moving on to the next art supply, which happens to be this Art and Fly marker in the color 14R. I use this to add even more shading to like the bottom of the pumpkin and create that like rounded shapeness of a jack-o'-lantern, you know. Then I used another Art and Fly marker this time, the color 23YR. And I used this to like smooth out some more of the texture in the hair, trying to even out that color and darken like the top rim of the hat. So like the part of the hat that's not being illuminated by the potion. Oh, and then I jumped back to that really dark Ohu marker and tried to add like strands of hair, a frizz, I guess. <laughs> this is the Goldfeber Aqua Faber Castell. So it's a watercolor pencil. And I had this idea that I would create like sort of a textured backdrop to the illustration of orange and I thought this would do the trick by adding water to it and like smoothing it out but it just ugh, I really don't like like I wasn't able to really get rid of those strokes of the pencil 
and so it was just kind of meh. I didn't really like it, but later I go over it with something else, so don't you worry your pretty little mind. Even though, to be honest, I was freaking out hardcore when I was doing it myself, so. <laughs> Abandoning the background for a second, and apparently to get more fun, I switched over to this acrylic Ohu marker, which I really enjoy using these things. They're very, they're just paint and a marker, so if you ever wanted to like paint, but you didn't want to get out your paints and you wanted to use a marker instead, these are the thing for you. I don't know why I just did a little advertisement for them. I just, I, I like them. I use them to decorate like birthday presents and stuff like draw over the wrapping paper, like get a plain like craft wrapping paper and then I draw over them with these. It's really, really fun. Don't know why I felt the need to say that. <laughs> and now it is time to go back to that background and finally fix it with this Amsterdam acrylic uh, in the color Vermilion again. Oops. <laughs> it just looks so orange. Look at it. It's just, it's very orange. I, it's orange enough, that's for sure. And I actually used this to even out that background that I had been ignoring for a little while. Um, I wouldn't normally do this, but I wanted to give that illusion of a watercolor background and this is an acrylic. So I decided to experiment and add a little bit of water to it and try and create a bit of a gradient. I'm not sure if you're supposed to do that. I don't think you really are, but this is a mixed media piece so I can mix my media with water. <laughs> that's not why it's called that. What I'm doing. Okay, so I just gave it a Google, and you can mix acrylics with water. So <laughs> it's fine. I don't know why I was being so hard on myself. It says you can do it to get a bit of more watercolory texture, which is what I wanted. So, <laughs> woohoo! <laughs> Aren't I smart? Anyway, I made it dark at the top of the illustration and the bottom of the illustration and it sort of like fade into light in the center where like the potion is so that it's almost like the potion's sort of giving off a little bit of light. That was the theory anyway. I don't know if it worked, but I do like the way it turned out. I think the like the gradient really helped with the piece and I like it. I like it. But I'm not done yet. I'm using this Ohu colored marker dual tip brush pen thing. I don't know, it doesn't really have a name. And I'm using that to add more definition to like the hands, so like line art on the hands, but it really wasn't dark enough for me. So I switched to a darker dual tip Ohu color marker brush tip pen thing. And I did the exact same thing, but with this darker one. And I also used actually the brush tip end of it and darkened up different sections of the illustration I thought needed a little bit more contrast. Like the hat was kind of blending in with the background so I went around that and things like that. Then I used this real Crayola crayon. Oh gosh, that was awful. I used this to color like the tight bits of fabric around her arms. I'm not sure what those would be called. I guess they're kind of cuffs. It's like the cuffs of her dress and then also added a little bit of texture to the bubbles. I like this color because it's a lot lighter than the other oranges and I think it's just because of the spaces, but yeah. Usually I have a lot of trouble with the crayons. Crayons, sorry. <laughs> um, but I feel like they, it suited this illustration pretty well. Oh, and you'll see here now I went back to that old dark Ohu marker again and just added in some more definition around the arms and like the hair and that. As you see, the further I go into this, the more I like want to darken things up and add contrast because a lot of these colors are very similar. So it was really necessary. So like I said, this marker was a lifesaver. Then I used a Paper Mate intro highlighter in the color orange to fill in that gap that I had left bright white of her dress because I wanted, you know, to give that illusion that the cauldron or the potion was glowing, but I colored it in with this because it's a bit lighter than some of the other oranges that I have um, because the white just seemed a little too out there. But I don't know. I, I really wish I had a better idea of what I was doing. I, again, I've never really played around with these exaggerated light sources before and just working on this one made me want to you know play around with it some more because I really enjoy the way like the top of the hat well the bottom of the hat actually is bright white because there's like light you know hitting it I just I like playing around with that and I, I do want to continue to in the future this is the Faber Castell polychromos pencil I believe these are kind of a big deal I don't know I'm actually not entirely sure where this pencil came from but it's orange so I'm using it I basically used this to just blend out some more of the facial features because I really wasn't happy with the way the face was looking. I mean, I mean, it's a witch, so I mean, it doesn't have to look like drop dead gorgeous or anything because um, she's probably got like evil that's eating away at her soul and it probably also eats away at her face. But I did want to like try and tweak it a little and hopefully make it a little better. 
Next, I use these two Ohu fine liners in orange. I don't love these. I really don't. If, if I get rid of any art supply, it's gonna be these. So I, I've got them in like a bunch of colors and I don't really like any of them, but I just used it to like add some like detailed lines all over the place here and there, that sort of thing. This is the Derwent Graphic Line Painter and honestly, it's dying on me. So any marks I get out of this is going to be a blessing. <laughs> This has like a paint and it's light and it's also kind of opaque so i was able to use this to draw over the darkest part that brown marker and create almost like a 3d effect to the jack-o-lantern you know like it was actually carved which i thought hey that's pretty cool don't you think at this point i realized i had left a lot of that prismacolor color erase pencil sketches line things there so i'm erasing those because the parts that I left bright white, I want to be, you know, very bright white to give the illusion of that glowing of the cauldron, so they had to go. And the last orange art supply that I'll be using today is the Manuscript Calligra Creative Duo Tip. I don't know, that's... It's got calligraphy on the pen and I can't read it, so... <laughs> I'm using this. I'm just using it to, like, again, play around with that hair because I still wasn't in love with it. And uh, that was it for orange art supplies. If you remember from the intro, I showed this um, India ink, this Dr. P.H. Martin Bombay India ink, but upon drawing this, I realized that the color was bright red, even though it kind of looked orange and that was just too red. I wasn't gonna go that red and I think that's cheating. So I didn't use that. <laughs> then I did some final last tweaks with my trusty, what color was that? 21 Ohu marker and also after that I realized there were some mistakes that only a white gel pen could fix and some might consider that cheating but the paper's white so I don't consider it cheating it's, it's almost like using an eraser on things that can't erase that's how I see it so <laughs> I guess that would mean it's cheating wouldn't it because you're erasing something that can't technically erase but I don't care, I'm using it anyway. I'm trying to salvage this as much as possible because I really didn't love the face. I mean, there's a lot about this that just needs more contrast and white is a good way to add contrast. So that's what I did, just added some kind of final changes and that was it. And I wanna show you what this looks like today. I drew this yesterday and today I'm just looking at it and the cauldron is like really, really glowing. I don't understand what about that like fluorescent Ohu marker. I don't know what they've got going on in there, but it just looks like it's glowing and I need to show you what it looks like today. Look at that. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, that's the finished illustration. I want to thank you guys for watching, coming along with me on this orange journey. Aren't you glad you did? Okay. Was... I hope everyone has a spoopy or spooky Halloween, whichever you prefer. I'm more on the spooky side personally. <laughs> um, I hope you have a great October and a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye.